Hi Alex, exclamation point. Is there a risk that RT is losing traction? I see many worrying signs, many Unreal Engine 5 games opting for software lumen, still ray tracing, by the way. Uh, CDPR discontinuing the Red Engine, which is argu arguably one of the best RT slash PT implementations. NVIDIA yeah. focusing on AI and not committing resources to implement high-end RT features in, game, like, in games like uh, Cyberpunk. No RT in Atomic Heart. RTGI in Forza, Forza Motorsport still not released, etc. Wow, Maybe the limited... RT capabilities of consoles are the culprit and hopefully PS5 Pro will help. The problem is that many games have the opinion that games look, many gamers have the opinion that games look quote unquote good enough without RT, often citing games with baked lighting without understanding the difference between real time lighting and baked lighting. Right. Lighting, yes. Um, yeah, this one should be fairly easy to dispatch. So uh, have at it. Yeah, so I don't think there is any... Um large trend to uh have the, what you just said about the ps5 pro for example is a good counter argument to and a supposed trend where sony is going to be there that's going to be the advertising angle that's going to be what they're telling developers at least that you can add more hardware rt when they're talking about stuff like a game having rt shadows they aren't talking about like software rt shadows they're talking about <laughs> hardware rt shadows and then you can add things like hardware rt reflections um we don't see any like the the industry i don't think so at all and i don't think there's been a reduction in the implementations of like hardcore ray tracing over time it's increased uh the the few games that you list there forza motorsport has had apparently from my outside view with no internal knowledge some sort of trouble development um, where the things that it has promised, it has not released. Uh, I wouldn't use that as an example for anything. Uh, with regard to games shipping only software Lumen, software Lumen uh, is a good enough approximation to do certain types of game types. I would vastly prefer hardware just because the fidelity increases, but I won't uh, yell at every single developer out there who doesn't release a hardware Lumen version of a game. Um, and you know things like the develop the, the 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 current version of hardware lumen. Yes, it is not so performant, especially on consoles. But things are changing in UE UE land at the moment. UE five point four is apparently going to be much more CPU efficient and going to have a better hardware RT implementation. Things like work graphs on PC are also going to increase. Uh, essentially the performance of things like hardware RT in Lumen or just uh, generally increase the performance of UE Unreal Engine. And they've already started demoing these things. So it, if anything, the entire industry is moving actually pretty f just further in this direction. And as soon as Intel releases Battle Mage and as soon as NVIDIA's Blackwell comes out, whatever that's going to be called, RTX 5090, 5080, we're going to see even more pushes for hardware RT and there's nothing wrong with software RT in general. I, I like back in the day, I loved Svogi. I thought it was cool. It, there's nothing wrong with a game not using hardware RT and using software RT. It's more like if the if the engine already supports it, it's a nice option to add for users, which is why I talk about it. Um, but yeah, I don't see this trend at all. Okay, uh, Oliver. Yeah, I actually think that like if anything, we're seeing the opposite of it. Especially when you look at a lot of upcoming games like Black Myth: Wukong and like the aforementioned uh, Star Wars Outlaws, where you know they do have heavily ray traced lighting. You know, they they're doing RTGI, they're doing uh, RTXDI, they're doing RT reflections. Maybe they're doing RT caustics. Like they're already doing so much ray tracing uh, with respect to their lighting that that it is kind of a bit of a ray tracing showcase and if anything like we're seeing a lot of developers begin to just depend on rt to just handle their lighting so i'd suggest it's if anything it's the opposite but i'd also suggest maybe it's an artifact to the fact that for some upcoming games we're in a stage of the promotional cycle where maybe the developers aren't talking about that who knows maybe for marvel 1943 maybe they got some like bespoke path tracing in there we just don't know yet because that game is like a year out at least probably at this point a year and a half out perhaps right and at some point they will discuss that they will disclose that certainly like when you go back to like alan wake 2 they weren't disclosing the fact that they had a path race renderer in there at, at, at the release at, or rather at the reveal date of that title it was later down the line so 
I think we are going to see more of that down the line, not less. And I wouldn't particularly worry about the fact that we haven't seen like a ton of announcements because I think those will eventually come, especially as like developers get to grips with new hardware, more powerful PC GPUs. I imagine it will happen. Yeah, I think from my perspective, the um, there's an interesting concept here that the idea that using ray tracing is taking too much performance out of the box. Therefore, it might be losing, uh, you know, um, momentum. It's kind of an argument that doesn't really make sense because, you know, if you look at most of the Unreal Engine 5 games out there, you know, they could be running on Unreal Engine 4. You know, Immortals of Avium looks great, but, it, you know, the fundamental concept of Immortals of Avium could work on Unreal Engine 4 or any right, other engine, basically. It's just that developers want to embrace the state of the art. And that comes with a performance cost, whether it's ray tracing, whether it's nanite, whether it's virtual shadow maps. So more holistically, developers are looking to make, you know, more advanced looking games and they're embracing these features. And, um, you know, we've highlighted that, um, you know, software Lumen has been used prolifically in Unreal Engine 5, but it's just part of the process, right? It's just part of the, the, the move onto, um, onto, onto a new engine. I'm sure it will get there. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. um, losing losing um, momentum, though, I guess, you know, Alan Wake shipped on console without um, uh, hardware accelerated ray tracing, but, you know, it was still there in PC. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, obviously, there is a bit of a divide forming because, you know, we now have PC parts in the mainstream that are actually quite good at ray, ray tracing, very good a lot better than the consoles. So there is that divide. But the point is that the overall direction of travel is towards more advanced features. We are seeing the transition from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. And uh, it's not just ray tracing that's part of that. It's just a general trend upwards. So um, yeah, I don't really see it losing traction. Obviously, you know, we've had games like Avatar coming out where it's all baked in. Marvel Spider-Man 2, where they basically removed the non-RT path because it just wasn't really needed anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I think basically cross-gen just slowed things down a lot more. Um, and of course, there's the fact that Unreal Engine 5 took years to develop and only, you know, in the last year, if we started to see titles actually emerge, even though it was showcased in 2020 alongside the uh, reveal of the PlayStation 5. So, yeah, a bit of patience, I think, but we are getting there. <laughs>